Part of me thinks it would be fun. The other part of me thinks it's a terrible idea. I don't know. You know, I didn't even know we should make the second one. You know, I don't want to. I don't want to ruin it. The living, the dead, can they coexist? Now's my chance. Jenna, Justin, it's a pleasure to be with you today to talk about Brilliance, Brilliance. Mr. Michael Keaton, it's a really huge honor to be with you. Thank you. Well, first of all, congratulations. And just to start the interview, there's a phrase that Rory mentioned to us reading a point of the film that is like, uh, death is always so tragic, no? So, but if anyone has made us see the afterlife and the unknown in a different way, it's Tim Burton, no? Mm. So, how was your perspective on the change after working on Builders Builders? For me personally, it it hasn't changed much. I think I'm, I think I just feel grateful and, and excited to have been able to work on this. And maybe it's just kind of like that gratitude and that appreciation. But for the most part, my my perception of death has always been very dark and humorous and um, and never too much pressure. It's nothing that I'm scared about. Uh, and Tim and I actually, I mean, since we've been working together for the last couple of years, we happen to have a very similar sense of humor. Therefore, something like this is right up my alley. I, I love films like this. Yeah, tag on to that. Yeah, I think the, the function writ large of this type of movie and dealing with death and, it, you, know, it, you know, of course it deals with death, but it also deals with life. It has these two alternating things. Both are equally absurd in Tim's mind. Um, the life is almost more absurd than 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 the afterlife. Um, so I love that it 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 sort of forces a dark subject into the conversation, um, but does it in a really fun, hilarious way. It is well known that the first Bill Juice movie became part of pop pop culture, right? Yeah, yeah. Until today, especially because of the way people connect with these uh, broken but highly charismatic characters. Yeah, yeah. For this sequel, what do you think is the legacy that Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice will be remembered for? More of the same, probably. You know, the people who relate to that, what you just mentioned, probably feel the same way. You know, they relate to, you know, Tim keeps talking about how much he relates to Lydia and and now Jenna's character, you know, he, you know and so he understands that feeling you know being and, I, and I, I know enough about that feeling of just being a little bit of an outsider or not 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 quite fitting in you know and there are a lot of people who feel like that you know um, it's not unusual but beyond that I think some people just been just it, it's there's all that but there's also it's just pure pleasure it's just it's unique you can't compare it to anything and so you know when, when you go see a lot of movies they're very good or brilliant or great. You say, oh, this is a brilliant movie. It's it's a lot, it reminds me of X, Y, Z. This movie, you say, doesn't remind me of anything. It reminds me of itself. We could say that Astrid and Rory are uh, unique characters in your careers, mm -hmm. right? So when it came to building them, how much of yourselves did you transfer to them? I hope I didn't bring anything of myself to him. Um, uh, I like I said, like I I like, I, which is why I think I enjoyed playing him so much because because um, it's sort of like it's like why you like to play villains because you know hopefully you're not an axe murderer so it's fun to play an axe murderer because it, it scratches some itch that you you know or if you do scenes where you cry you know a lot um, you know. It, sometimes can be you know, cathartic in some way. So there is something just fun about playing someone so stupid, you know. I think for me, uh, just because it was my first time entering this set and a lot of people obviously were coming back from the original, um, my character and I both were kind of confused as to what was happening. And uh, I got to just kind of embrace that aspect of everyday showing up and not really, uh, you know, understanding or, or being surprised by everything that I was seeing because I was experiencing it for the first time as well. <laughs> Hope, hopefully nothing, <laughs> but but you know not no not, not nothing. I just invent things, you know. Just let my mind run free, and you know. Once I established early on the first one, I said I want to have them to have a, this look. I want them to have a broken nose. I want them to have teeth. I want yeah. I want him to walk, you know, a certain way. Then I go okay. That's that's I'll start with that. 
you know, but I, but I, you know, unlike other roles, I can't, I can't draw any personal experience. You know, I'm not, I'm nuts. I'm not that nuts. In a few hours, you are going to meeting with your fans from Mexico City. Mm. Uh, how do you think the public, the Mexican audience, will react with Beetlejuice? Beetlejuice. Uh, we're, we've talked a lot about yeah. it. Like we think it's going to do. It's going to be so much fun. We, I mean, we've we've seen it already. I mean, yesterday we had a little press conference and people were dressed head to toe. You know, as yeah. on Beetlejuice. So I, I I hope that people bring that same energy and and uh, it'll be so much fun to celebrate the movie with them. Yeah, and we think that this movie really, in particular, with Mexican culture, really sort of jives with this sort of the joy of. Um, you know, sort of the celebration of the afterlife and 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 family and people who have passed on and there's there's I, I couldn't quite verbalize what it is, but there is some connection there. Well, uh, based on what I'm listening to and talking, uh, you know, the people I talk to, very positively. But for some reason, you know, it's big all over the world. Everyone likes it, but there's something about being down here in Mexico City. I, I don't know what it is. I can't explain it. It feels like it feels bigger. It feels more uh, something special. Yes, there's something here. I don't know what it is, but there's something that you know that they embrace it all over the world for sure. But here it feels like bigger. I don't know why. Just to finish. If you could bring other characters from Tim Burton universe into the world of Beetlejuice, oh, Beetlejuice good question. Who it would be? Maybe, maybe Johnny's character from uh, Edward Scissorhands. Oh, maybe. Nice choice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, that's a good question. Uh, I'd have to go back and <laughs> look at them all. Uh, maybe Jack from uh, from the maybe the Joker. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why not? Why so, not? Michael, Mr. Michael, it was a really pleasure. Thank you very much. You. I wish you all the luck with this movie. Thanks very much. So guys, thank you so much for your time, thank you. and thank I you. wish you all the love with this movie. Thank, you, thank so you so much. Are we doing this? Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. I'm needed upstairs.